The topic of this video is properties of tilted or slanted lines. Let's look at a problem. Find the equation of the line through points negative 1, 0, and 5, 4. All right, so we remind ourselves we're being asked for the equation of a line, and then we need to think our way through our flowchart. The first thing we need to know is the slope. Well, for this problem, we're given two points. And if you want to know the slope of the line that goes through two points, you use the slope formula. Let's call this first point x1, y1, and let's call this second point x2, y2. The slope formula says m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's plug in. y2 is 4 minus from the formula. y1 is 0. Fraction bar. x2 is 5 minus from the formula. x1 is negative 1. Notice we have two hyphens back to back, and subtracting a negative is adding. So this is like 4 minus 0 over 5 plus 1, which is 4 over 6, which reduces to 2 thirds. So the slope of our line needs to be 2 thirds. We now know the slope, and we're ready to move on to the point. For the first time, we now have a decision to make. Which point should we choose? We know that this path, the leftward path, is easier. And we should always choose it if we have a point with an x coordinate of 0. But sadly, in this problem, we don't have that available. So which point should we pick? Negative 1, 0 or 5, 4? You'll get the right answer no matter which one you pick. But sign errors are a very common error in algebra. So if you have the opportunity to avoid using a negative, you should. Let's use the point 5, 4 because it has no negatives. So we'll use the point. 5 comma 4. Okay, it has an x-coordinate that's not 0, so we take the path to the right, which is the point slope formula. y minus y1 equals m times the difference x minus x1. And so we plug in y minus y1, which is 4, equals m, which is 2 thirds, times x minus x1, x minus 5. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, x1, y1, isn't that how we defined it here? And it is true that earlier in this problem, we labeled this x1, y1, but then we moved on to something else. And that something else was a new equation form with a new point, and this became our new x1, y1. So when it comes to figuring out what x1, y1 is, you're using the point that you selected, the point that you had at the end of this step. Okay, great. So this is our equation. It's in the point slope form. But very often, software packages require us to have an answer that is in the slope intercept form instead of the point slope form. So we're going to take this problem a little further. We're going to distribute the 2 thirds. So we'll get y minus 4 equals 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds times 5. We'll figure out that in our side workspace. 2 thirds times 5 is the same thing as 2 thirds times 5 over 1. Numerator 2 times 5 is 10. Denominator 3 times 1 is 3. So we get y minus 4 equals 2 thirds x minus 10 thirds. Now add 4 to both sides. So y minus 4 equals 2 thirds x minus 10 thirds, and we're going to add 4 on both sides. The minus 4 plus 4 cancel, leaving us y equals 2 thirds x, and then we need to find a way to get these to come together. Well, one thing we could write is that 4 is the same as 4 over 1. And then, to get a common denominator, we can multiply both the 1 and the 4 by 3. So then we would have y equals 2 thirds x minus 10 thirds plus 12 thirds. Now that these have a common denominator, we can add the fractions. So we get y equals 2 thirds x, negative 10 plus 12 is plus 2. So plus 2 thirds. 
This is the equation of our line in the slope-intercept form. And, for the record, this was the equation of our line in the point-slope form. For some problems, you can stop here, but for many others, you have to take it all the way, which is why we have a rearrange step at the end of our flowchart.